YouTube. It's been a while since I've done one of these. And uh, had a little time and a little bit of data to spare. I haven't been doing live streams because I ran out of data. Um, one month actually went over. So I've been trying to uh, behave in the data consuming department. But um, had a little situation I wanted to talk about. Um, the unit that I checked out on the Dirty Maintenance North Carolina video um, was sensors and everything went back to working normally. Um, but I get back out there today and the unit's pumping down again. Had a ridiculously high head pressure with no subcooling, at least not at that point during the few seconds that the system tried to run. And 105 degrees of superheat. So I started troubleshooting to confirm where the problem was. I double checked the EEV temperature sensors again. Those were fine. Uh, they were reading the ambient temperature inside the air handler, which was like 104. Um, I had posted pictures to my Facebook group, and um, you can check those out if you uh, if you want. But um, EEV sensors were good. I forced force tested, test forced it, whatever, the um, EEV open um, while I was watching my pressures at the condenser, and um, the pressures didn't change, but the system wasn't running. I kind of expected it to equalize like it would if you de-energized the reversing valve um, in an off cycle, but it didn't. So, I also noticed that when I moved the low voltage thermostat bundle on the TAM4 air handler, that the um, the zone board and the blower and everything would drop out momentarily, and if I fiddled with it enough, it dropped out completely couldn't find a good reason why except for um, a couple of thermostat wires in the bundle did not have really good contact with the other wires. There was three wires in the uh, wire nut and the, um, uh, what do you call it, all three wires weren't making good contact. So. I straightened up those connections and played with the wires some more and it couldn't get it to malfunction again. But in the process of all of this, I um, left both the blower door and the coil door off of that TAM air handler and let the system run. And during that time, everything stayed running. It didn't shut off after just a few seconds of runtime. Um, so, uh, da -da -da -da. what's going on here? Um, trying to get the chat to come up so I can see what's going on here. Um, hello, I can't tell who you are, but hello. Um, so, the system started running normally. I let it run, I fiddled with the sensors, I fiddled with the thermostat wire and just, you know, waited for it to do something stupid, and it wouldn't. Ended up running um, a little bit higher subcooling than the design. It was running about a 12 subcool with an 8, um, eight subcool target, and um, I don't remember off the top of my head at this point what I had left the system as 
previously, but if I remember, it was not far from target at that point either. Had a 17 and a half degree temperature split, um, like a 95 degree return and a 70 something supply. Um, I, I, I don't remember. Um, but anyway, it just fixed itself. I don't know how it fixes itself, but it was dropping out on a low pressure because it kept pumping down um, as it was trying to run when I got there. Um, but today has seemed to be a valve day issue. So I left that call. Um, that was in Four Oaks, North Carolina, over by 95, and um, went, came back to Raleigh and went to a call where they said that the system kept sputtering. And I guess that's one of the better descriptions for what it was doing, but it was also pumping down. Um, <coughs> they weren't complaining of any uh, cooling performance issues but they were complaining about the noise from the sputtering condenser. Um, so I hooked up to the system. Well, when I got there, nobody was home. I ran around the back of the house just to try to preview what was going on, and I heard the system pumping down. Um, so I pulled the disconnect and then waited about 45 minutes for, it, for the customer to sh show up. <laughs> So, it was a landlord-tenant situation. I talked to the landlord before I started working, but when I figured out that it was a valve issue, um, I called and didn't get a message, so I texted him and told him what was going on, and I never got a response. And it's been, I don't know, an hour and a half now that they still haven't responded to me. So I advised the tenant that it was probably not a great idea to actually use the system for cooling because it would definitely damage the compressor um, running hot like it was. I think I had a 29 degree subcool and a 73 degree superheat. Um, while I was waiting on the landlord to get back to me, um, I figured I would at least try to dump a little refrigerant because initially I had like a 517 PSI head and 162 suction at which point it doesn't necessarily sound like a bad valve. So I dumped a pound of refrigerant and ran it again and um, it I, I, I pulled the disconnect before it got too far, but it ran up to 408 on the head pressure and was down at 40 PSI on the suction. So, I mean, it's pretty classic for a uh, bad expansion valve. Um, that system, I posted some pictures. It's uh, 2014 train uh, three ton, 13 sear, and the return is two 10 inch hard ducts, no insulation. The system was horrendous. It had a section of um, duct board coming off of the evaporator coil, and then an old plenum box with hard metal duct with insulation wrapped on it half of the duct, the insulation was chewed up and smashed and the ducts weren't round anymore. But it's just hideous that someone would install a brand new 13 sear 3 ton unit and not mention ducting to the level that it needed to be mentioned so that the customer realized how much they were going to lose on that nice new 13 sear um, because of massive leakage in the duct <coughs> and 
poorly, uh, poor insulation and damaged broken ducting. So that was most of my fun today. Um, the rest of the day wasn't particularly notable. So anyway, just wanted to throw up a little bit of a update on uh, what's going on there and I'm going to go home, eat some dinner, take a shower and sleep. Thank God I'm not on call this weekend. I've got uh, a disaster in the back of this van that I need to straighten out if I can. Um, depending on how the weekend goes, I might go back over to Project Rodnizer and see if I can um, finalize a couple of things that I still haven't been able to finish. Once I got the system up and running, you know, there was no major um, disaster to be averted. So, and the weather broke hot, and I haven't had a whole lot of time to catch my breath and get back over there. But if I get over there, I'll try to shoot some video and let you know what's going on over there. Um, give you a little bit of an overview of what's finalized. And um, beyond that, have a good weekend. Be safe out there. Get your, uh, get your fluids and your carbs. Keep yourself alive. Might want to eat some potassium. I think that's what's in bananas, right? Anyway, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, and share. And we'll catch you on the next video. Peace out.